All right, so here we have a restaurant with a ketchup dispenser that follows the normal distribution with a mean of 1.05 ounces and a standard deviation of 0.08 ounces. So part A says that the restaurant's goal is to put between one and 1.2 ounces of ketchup on each burger. And so we want to find the percent of the time that this will happen. So let's begin by drawing a picture of what's going on. It says normal distribution, so let's draw a normal curve. Looks all right. My best, that's okay. And if it's normal, you write n. Remember, a normal curve has this notation n of mu comma sigma. So the normal distribution with a mean of 1.05, that means that the mu is 1.05. So you can write this as n of 1.05, comma 0.08. Know this notation because it's going to be under, it should be understood, um, you know, from here on out. So that means this point in the middle will be 1.05. And we want to find essentially the area of this curve between 1 and 1.2. So 1 is going to be you know, to the left of 1.05. So 1, like this. And then get this whole thing right. And 1.2 will be you know, something like that. 1 and 1.2. We want to find this. This is going to, this shaded area is going to represent our percent. So we want to find that. Our goal is to figure out that area. Now, um, what we're going to do is change these values into um, standardized values, so z scores, in other words. So our z score is equal to as the original observation values, which we usually use x to represent, x minus the mean over the standard deviation. Now, so in this case, we have two x values, you can say. So let's call that one, let's call this one x1. That's called 1.2 x2. So x1 is 1.2, or x1 is 1, and x2 is 1.2. And so we have essentially two z values we've got to find. And what we're essentially trying to find is that is the, is the area on a normal distribution. So let's draw, let me draw a small one right here. So standardized normal curve where the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. So n of one, n of zero comma one. And we have two z values that correspond to these x values that will give you the same area between them. So that's not very good. <laughs> So let's call that Z1, let's call that Z2. Now, if we like to, we want to use Z values because if we have our, our values as Z scores, we can use the normal distribution or we can use a normal table and use the and find the areas corresponding to these, and we could find the areas of the red. So let's find what z values would be here and here. So we just have to solve this equation for z1 and z2. So then z1, we would make it just, let me put it down here. Oh, I'll give it right here. Z1 would then be just x1, which is 1, minus mu, which is 1.05, over. 0.08. So then Z1 would just be, I think that's like a negative, let's see, 1 minus 1.05 divided. Divided by 0.08. We have negative 0.65. Point six two five. That's that's this. That's this value. And then let me put that in red actually. And Z two will be X two one point two minus the same mean one point oh five over the same standard deviation point oh eight. And we'll get. Uh, 0 0.15 divided by 0 0.08, we get a 1.875. So 
we want to find the area between the, the z scores of 0.625 and 1.875. So we're going to use our we're going to use a table A, and remember table A only gives you the area to the left. So we can use the, the you know, our understanding of the total area under this curve has added to one. So what we can do is you know find the area, find the area here. And then find the area, you know, here as well. Or you can just find the total area to the left of Z2 and subtract this area from it. There's a couple of ways to go about it. You just have to be logical. So whatever way makes the most sense for you. But let's find, let's find what this is. We'll go from there. So um let me switch my screen here so that um, you can see the table what I'm looking at. Okay, so here we have see our normal table or table A. And this tells you, you know, the area to the left of you know, its Z value. So we're going to look first for negative 0.625. So negative 0.62. And this is the closest, let's use 0 0.630 to conservative. So the area to the left of negative 0 0.63 will be this 0 0.2643. So we'll have that. And then let's look at the area to the left of our Z2 value or to the right of our Z2 value. So let's look at 1.875. We're gonna go to 1.875. So 1.87 and we don't have, you know, let's go one, this is right of 1.88. So the area to the left of 1.88, the total area to the left of 1.88 will be 0.9699. Now, since the area to the left of negative 1.88 is, you know, uh, 0.9699, that means the area to the right of it will be 1 minus 0.9699, which is about 3%. This, this is rounded to 97%. And so the area to the right of that second D value, so the area, you know, to the right will be about 3%. Let's go back and let's switch the screen so you can see what I'm doing. So then this area and this area. So here we got this black area. This is about three, this is again, rounded about 3%. And then um, this, we got about 26 point, like, I mean, let, me, let me look at it again. This 26 point, uh, 26 point, four, five, is about, so let me make it, let's just, or 0.43, we can write it. So let's put, um, so let's be about 26.43%. Now again, so if, you, if you're again wondering how I got that 3%, I mean, the Z2 value tells you the entire area to the left. The entire area to the left we found to be about 96.99%. So 96.99% to the left of Z2, that's the area, and to the right of it, it'll just be, you know, a little less, a little about 3%, because it has that up to, uh, has that up to 100%. Anyways, so just using this, um, we can then figure out that the red area you know, it's just going to be 100% minus three minus that. Let me go up. So let me write it down here. So the percent of this red area, and it will be approximately, approximately one, or let's just go 100% minus 26.43% minus, let's say about 3%. So we'll get about a little more than a little more than seventy percent. So we'll get about you know seventy point five seven percent ish. And again, they don't. It's not too. It's not too important how precise your answers are because in the statistics, you're not grading you on like these calculations. They're grading you on the logic. So if you just put your answer about seventy percent, that'll be acceptable. So make sure you show your work, and you'll be fine. And now let's look at part B. So in part B, we have that the machine is adjusted so that the settings uh, make it so that the new mean is 1.1 ounces. And we want to figure out how much the standard deviations of the new setting for the machine has to be changed or how, you know, how much has to be reduced to make it so that at least 99% of the restaurant's burgers have between 1 and 1.2 ounces of ketchup on them. 
So again, let's go ahead, let's draw a new picture to show what's going on. Always draw a picture when you start off with these problems. It not only lets you understand it better, but it lets the grader show, like see what you're doing and they can give you partial credit, even if you get the problem wrong. But again, it really helps. Plus it's fun. We have a normal distribution. No, it's not good. Reset. It's not very good again either. I work on this. Normal with a mean of 1.1. If you don't know what standard deviation is, that's what we're going to solve. So you're going to leave it as sigma. So 1.1 is there. <clears throat> now, um, we're told that um, we want at least 99% of the restaurants to be between one, to have between, have between one and 1.2 ounces of ketchup on them. So let's put the one over here. The 1.2 be to the right. And it's a symmetrical line. It's, it looks like it might not be too hard. It's not gonna look this, it's just like unrealistic, it's not the scale, but let's just go with it. So that area here is 0.99. Nine nine percent. Now, if that's 0.99, that means the area to the right and left, this black area and this black area over here, have to add up to one percent. And since it's symmetrical, each of this, each of these will be half a percent, or 0.005 of the decimal. And now let's throw in our equation for Z again, so we can make some more sense. Remember, Z is equal to our original observation values, X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So we're trying to solve for sigma. Um, we have X values, I mean, we have two of them. We have X1 here as one and X2 here is 1.2. We have a mean. We don't have a standard deviation, but we can find Z scores that go with these. And again, that's because each of them corresponds to a normal distribution. Let me draw it over here again, like, like last time. Normal distribution with mean zero, same deviation of one. One, so zero. And this will be, it's corresponded to our Z1. And this will correspond to our Z2. And between Z1 and Z2 is 0.99 area area of 0.99. And then again, that means this will be an area of 0 0.005, half a percent. And same thing here, 0 0.005. So this is why you have a picture, because now this is all making sense. And it's pretty much like the previous problem, once you see it, once you see it all like this. So we just find the Z value that has an area of 0 0.005 so left of it, Plug it in here and solve for, for sigma, solve for standard deviation. So let's go back to our normal table. So let me switch the screen here. Okay, so remember our normal, our table A here tells you, um, this table A tells you the area to the left of the z-score. Now we're going to work kind of backwards because we know the area to the left of the z-score. So we work from the inside of this and we find the z-score that corresponds to that area. The area to the left of the z-score that we want to find is half a percent or 0 0.005. So look inside the interior for the value closest to 0 0.005. So looking, looking, you can see that it'll be about somewhere cutting close. Do to do, we have right here. Um, we have negative 0 .00, we have 0 0.0051 and 0 0.0049. To be conservative, let's go with this one. So the one that's corresponding to 0 0.0049 will be a z-score of negative 2.58. Again, the area here. And now let's go back to our, let's go back to the problem. So negative 2.58 will be our z1 value. So this z1, this is negative, negative 2.58, approximately. I mean, only one of these. So this will be positive 2.58. And it's symmetric. So in case you want to do that, let's just work with this one. So then we just substitute negative 2.58 for z. 
for x, we're going to have x1, so 1 minus mu, and it's all for standard deviation. So let's go ahead and let's do that. We're going to have a negative 2, negative 2.58 equals 1 minus the mean, so minus 1.1 over sigma. So, so continuing this, negative 2.58 equals negative 0.1 over sigma. And remember, treat sigma like a, uh, like a variable. So think of it as like negative 0.1 over x. Don't get confused, please. Don't ha always worry when students mess up on this part of their stats problem. This is the algebra part. But any, anyways, let me put this in red just so it stands out more. So multiply both sides by sigma. And that makes it so that you have, let me go to the next line, I erase too space, too much space. And we have negative 2.58 sigma equals negative 0.1. And then sigma will just then be negative 0.1 divided by negative 2.58. Divide each side by negative 2.58. And so sigma will be, the standard deviation will be, let's use a calculator for this. Avoid it mess up. Yeah, about 0 0.03875. to be precise. But again, you don't have to write that whole thing. So about negative 0 0.039 will be a good answer. And um, there we go. That's that's basically your answer. So then the standard deviation has to be changed then to the standard deviation will have to be about point oh three nine ish. We're good.